Candace Owens' recent conversations about Andrew Tate have really helped to expose a problem in Christianity that we're all vulnerable to today. Long time. I know, it's been a very long time. And that's the problem of just how easily we can be deceived by people due to our tendency to give more precedence to political convictions rather than our Christian convictions. And this doesn't just stop with Candace Owens, it goes much, much deeper. Now, first off, I don't know Candace's motives, but if you start watching the first few minutes of her interview with Andrew Tate, you'll quickly notice that she seems to be taking a protective posture towards Tate as they address the damning clips going around of Tate bragging about the same crimes he's currently being charged with. So I did see a, a mashup clip that we're not going to show because I, I thought it was unfair, I will say that, yeah. um, only because there was no context provided to the clips. It was, yep. it was, and I also take exception to, I think, digging back 10 years. Um, how have you transformed? And I, I've seen changes just, I think, in the last five years. Yep. The idea that you did something 10 years ago, which you would no longer agree with, is one thing. I don't think anybody is finding any clips from the last five to six years which have anything negative in them. Right. I, th I think you've changed. I, that's why I said over the last five years, I think there's been there, there's been a seismic shift. All right. So given the conversation so far, they seem to be in agreement that those damning clips of Tate were made 10 years ago and that now Tate is a changed man. The only problem is those clips that were included in the mashup were not all from 10 years ago. And in fact, out of the main three clips that were shown in the mashup, one of them was streamed only three three years ago, and another one was streamed only two years ago. And the one that was streamed live in 2020, again, not 10 years ago, Tate seemed very proud of his past work and was actively selling his PhD course, which was by definition, a course on how to do the very thing that he was arrested for. Yeah. On corporatetape.com, I have my PhD program, and that is, uh, PhD is a uh, pimp and hose degree. That I'm, um, Clever. And that, Clever. That, that, that teaches basically how I got girls, how I met girls, how I got girls to like me, how I got girls to fall in love with me to work on webcam for me. Because that's what I did. That was my, my MO was find girls, make them love me and make them work for me. And that's how I got rich. So that teaches everything I know from start to finish about uh, not only getting girls, not only obtaining them, but retaining them. Because that's a completely different game as well. And here's another video that was filmed during the pandemic in which Tate not only talks about being involved in the same pornographic business, but he also demonstrates for us his views on women, which don't seem any different than his views were in the oldest clips that we have of Tate. Currently filming this during the COVID pandemic, that you may be watching this later on, but right now during the pandemic, I also have an OnlyFans business. For the last two to three years, I've been making money on OnlyFans from its inception all the way up till now. And the reason I started this course is because a lot of people have been asking me, Tate, how do you get girls to work for you on OnlyFans? Why would a girl work for you and not decide to do it by themselves? First things first, the reason women need a man to do OnlyFans is the same reason a woman need a man to do anything because they're incompetent and they're very, very lazy. All right, now let's be clear on what this doesn't show. This doesn't show that he's guilty of his current crimes, but what it does show is that it's not enough to dismiss those past clips on the premise that Tate has proven himself to be a changed man in the last five to 10 years. In fact, as far as I can tell, Tate didn't show any significant change in his attitude about his past behavior prior to his arrest. In the Full Sin podcast interview of Tate, which was recorded not too long before his arrest, Tate not only bragged about what he did in the past, but he also said that he didn't feel bad at all for the men that he deceived into losing their homes and life savings. So the chicks would sit there and hit a keyboard that wasn't plugged in. And me and my brother, and eventually some staff I trained, would do all the talking. The girls were just pure, just famoosers, just laughing and doing this, the out. And they were talking to ice cold hustlers. We were taking their money, all of it. I had these guys selling their houses, life savings, loans, all of it to me. Give me it all. So like, and it's, it's basic shit, right? You'd have Did a you guy. feel bad or no? No. To give a solitary fuck. Now, that was from a year ago. So I'll let you decide. Does this sound like a man who radically changed his mindset about his cam modeling business and the way that he thinks about women? Now, of course, it's possible that he changed his mindset after his arrest. And if so, we'd expect for him to be regretful about the things that he said and done in his past. But even when he's talking to Candace, he said that he's not regretful for what he did and he's not sorry for it either. I'm not the kind of person who's going to sit and apologize for his past. I'd be a fool and I'd be disingenuous to sit here and pretend I was sorry for something I did in the past. And I'm not going to do that. I'm going to be very honest to everyone at home. I think I could have done much worse things. I know many people from my circumstances who did many things worse than what I did. And 
all in all, I'm not going to sit and pretend I'm sorry for something I'm not sorry for. So I don't know how much Tate has changed since his arrest, but one thing that I do know is the fact that Candace seems to be deceived by this narrative that he's changed drastically in the last five to six years. And unfortunately, it gets worse. If you spend even a half hour researching the things that Tate says, you'll see that almost everything that he said to Candace Owens has been contradicted by what he said elsewhere. I ended up opening a webcam company where girls would sit on a laptop and they would talk to guys on the internet for money. That's what they would do. So the chicks would sit there and hit a keyboard that wasn't plugged in. And me and my brother and eventually some staff I trained would do all the talking. The, the girls would sit there fully clothed or a bikini. Some of them would paint pictures. Some of them would sing songs. I ran a webcam studio, which people find very interesting. I had naked girls sitting on the internet talking to guys. The girls would sit there fully clothed or a bikini. They're sitting there with their tits out on a computer. They're sitting on a computer, they're getting paid, just like if they were sitting in any other job and getting paid, they just haven't got the top on. I didn't sell drugs. So when I was 24, 25, I sold drugs. Long time ago now. I didn't sell drugs. I be honest and open about my past. I was a fighter, but fighting wasn't paying the bills, sold drugs, whatever. I didn't sell drugs. So I'm selling drugs. First off, how long ago was your webcam business? Yeah, so I stopped, I stopped having any involvement with it. I think eight to nine years ago, I stopped. It was a long time ago. It was at the early stages of the internet. For four years, I ran a webcam studio. You do that yeah. still? Um, I recently, I have three girls who still work for me. Not to mention that Tate's business partner and brother Tristan said on the live stream just one year ago that the cam business was still going as well. The cam business, is uh it's still going because my most loyal girls will never leave me that's why it's going so i have these girls on these various webcam websites who will never ever ever leave so it's not that i need the money or that i want to do it it's just that i know these girls aren't going anywhere if i if i managed to bully them out of romania and kick them out of the country they'd be half it making far less money by themselves I, I may as well keep the business together if it's that if, if you're gonna make it that easy for me um and the tastes always say that there's absolutely no evidence against them these are only some of the files and transcripts on the tates does this look like no evidence anything you see from before 2021 has nothing to do with the case well that's odd since the indictment specifically is citing incidents from 2016 2017 2018 and all the way up until their arrest in 2022 everything from these old videos old clips my webcam company things that happened 10 years ago have absolutely nothing to do with the correct case. according to the large 86 page case file that you can get legally through romania's freedom of information act on page 61 one, you'll see that they're quoting Tate out of several of his past videos and using that as evidence against them. It even explicitly says on the file that the judge could not agree with the defense's claim that these video contents show only one character and could not be taken into account. So when Tate says that none of it's relevant to the case and that none of it can be found in the case file and so on, he's counting on you to just take his word for it. Because as you can see, they are clearly in the case file and anyone can get access to this information, which I've linked down below. Now, I wanna be clear, that doesn't mean that they're guilty of the crimes. It just means that they've been consistently lying about their crimes and the nature of their case. But maybe the most disturbing thing about all of this is the fact that Candace helped Tate mislead people on what he's actually being charged with, making it sound as if he's only being charged with being nice to women. There seems to be this understanding that you are being prosecuted or you're being indicted rather for human sex trafficking charges. I've read the indictment and I do want to make it clear the words human sex trafficking occur on the indictment, but then it very makes it very clear that what they're referring to is they've kind of extended the term. It's not what we think about in America when you think of a bunch of children being put into yeah. a truck and taken over the border against their will. They're basically saying that if you, if you trick a woman into coming into a country by using the lover boy method, then they consider that to be human sex trafficking. So the definition has definitely expanded over time. Well, all and here's where I genuinely start to question if Candace both read and understood the indictment. Even on the screenshot of the indictment that she shared, on the parts that she didn't highlight, it makes it clear that this was done with the aim of sexually exploiting the women. Now, just so we're clear, he's not being charged with simply being nice to women. The charge is not simply deceiving women, but deceiving women into doing sex work with the goal of making him money. That's something that's not only illegal but also something that tate has admitted to and bragged about in several videos in the past like my whole i used sex as a tool to make women love me so they'd obey me and live in my house and make me money that that's what i wanted so i was a pimp in that sense like i was not trying to have sex with women i was trying to get women to obey me and i realized 
that's easier if they like to have sex with me. <laughs> if they don't like having sex with me, it's pretty hard to make them listen to me. Now, whether or not you think that lover boy trafficking should be illegal or not is one thing. But when it comes to the law, what's certain is that the Tates have admitted in several videos to doing it in the past. And it's a flat out lie to say that he's only being charged with being too nice. They've accused me of using the lover boy method because basically I was a nice person. I was nice. So when Candace says that they're stretching the definition of trafficking in Tate's case, they are kind of stretching the definition of sex trafficking in your case. I've taken a look at it. She must not be aware that what he did fits the definition of trafficking perfectly. And that's a definition that like 173 countries agreed on more than 23 years ago when Tate was like 12. This isn't a new and stretched definition made to frame Tate. This is an old definition that hasn't been stretched. But what's worse is that Candace tells her audience that trafficking is the same thing as what happens on 90 Day Fiance. Essentially what they're saying is we have a show in America called 90 Day Fiance. Yeah. That is the lover boy method is women yep. that, <laughs> that go over to the U.S. Yep. They're clearly coming for citizenship, but these women kind of get duped and they get, they sponsor these people. Yep. This would be the same vein of what they're trying to describe. I've read it myself of what human sex trafficking can be, which is oh, it's an a woman reach. fell for you, fell in love, moved over here overseas. But it's only because you were very convincing. Yeah, that is the definition given in the indictment of what they're referring to. Correct. So no not even close. That's literally not the definition, nor what's being described in the indictment. I mean, if Candace were even close to being right, then she would also have to say that Jeffrey Epstein wasn't a trafficker either, since he didn't have women locked up in chains and plenty of the women felt free to leave. In fact, a lot of the women there were also happy and wanted to stay. So does that mean that Epstein wasn't a trafficker? Of course not. This just shows a fundamental misunderstanding of what the law actually is. And when it comes to Tate's case, contrary to what Candace says, of course, that isn't what the charge says in the indictment. In the indictment, it's about recruiting women with the intent to deceive them into doing sex work for you, not being nice. So not only is she wrong and being misleading here, so is he. They've accused me of using the lover boy method because basically I was a nice person. I was nice. That's the thing that so uh, most people don't understand about the law. It's so ridiculously subjective. If they want to weaponize it and use it to attack you, that's exactly what they'll do. They can accuse any man of using the lover boy method if you send nice messages on a text message. If you're like, hey, baby, how are you? So did you, <laughs> hey, did you, you promise, were nice. Did you that's so ridiculous that it's almost funny. I mean, does anyone actually believe that? Again, what's illegal is being nice with the intent on deceiving women into doing sex work for you so that way you can make money. That's the problem, not simply being nice to women. But here's where Candace's bias becomes undeniable and in my opinion, damaging to the public opinion of the case. You may recall a time in the interview where Candace says this. And I also take exception to, I think, digging back 10 years. Um, I don't know who could survive that litmus test. I'm 34 years old today. Yeah. And it would really be unfair if we went and found Candace, a 24 years old liberal, dancing at One Oak and <laughs> said, well, look at these clips of Candace Owens. Fortunately, I had no cameras in my face 10 years ago. Yeah. You somehow did. This is odd, given the fact that Candace has not only dug up the past of people like George Floyd and literally anyone on the other side of the political aisle, but but shortly after this interview, Candace went on to defend Tate some more by digging up the last several years of one of Tate's accusers. Before she ever met a Tate brother, Emma Gabby was a sex worker. She had her own Pornhub account and she could be contacted via a sex hotline. Again, that is before she ever met a Tate brother. She also had an OnlyFans account and a TikTok account before she ever met a Tate brother. She also was active on the website seekingarrangements.com which if you guys are not familiar with seekingarrangements.com, it's essentially a sugar baby website. So it's young girls. I don't believe that people who sit and attack somebody for their past, especially something from so long ago, are genuinely virtuous. I don't think it's about virtue. I think it's about, well, I can get some clicks this way or I can get some views that way. Now, of course, Candace is digging up this woman's past because she believes that it may be indirectly relevant to whether or not the girl is telling the truth about what happened in the case. But for some reason, when Candace has shown a half dozen clips of Tate literally admitting the lover boy trafficking in the past, she suddenly thinks that digging up someone's past is wrong and irrelevant to the case. I do think what's happening right now is they are wrongly conflating you having run a webcam business, however long it was, ago to the criminal cases happening in Romania. And this is why I interject into my voice. And I also take exception to, I think, digging back 10 years. Um, so why are the countless clips like this not relevant to Tate's character and whether or not he's innocent or guilty? I them so they listen to me, so I can get what I actually want, which is not them. 
to means to an end. Every single Bond girl was exploited. That's exactly what I do. Now, this truly makes you wonder how Candace was able to provide one hour of evidence and research in defense of Tate going against a single victim, but seemingly didn't do any research when it comes to evidence that could go against Tate. I mean, could you imagine if Tate was a screaming liberal or someone working at CNN? She would have used all of her resources to dig up his past and use that against them. So Candace seems to clearly be playing favorites here. But all is not lost because one clip that Candace actually did confront Tate about, that clip is actually a really tough one to get out of because Tate once again described in detail his process of lover boy trafficking. I cannot get a girl to work for you having fun. So the recruitment process is the same as the PhD course. You message them on Instagram. The PhD course is my recruitment system. I don't mention webcam until after I've had sex with the girl. If you're on dates and you're trying to mention it and shit, it just doesn't work. It puts them off. I'd never do that. That's disgusting. I'm not a whore. Uh, it's just not gonna work. You continue as normal. No mention of webcam. You f the girl. After you f the girl, you do the PhD test. If she passes the PhD test and she wants to be with you, then you start mentioning things like, yeah, but you know, you're always busy. You're always at work. You can come work for me. Okay, so first question, when was this video taken? Yes. But unfortunately, it doesn't appear that Candace even attempted to check the context herself before interviewing him about the clip, or she would have known that Tate was straight up lying to her face about the video. By the way, I've linked the original video down below so you can watch the context in full for yourself, along with the indictment and other sources and clips that I'm talking about in this video. In the original video, the explicit point in its full context is that Tate is actually teaching men how to target and deceive women for the sole purpose of getting them to do webcam and make money for him. He teaches that you do this by going on dates with them, using sex, and having a bottom chick lie and manipulate the girl into doing cam work, which once again, of course, is the the very thing that Tate was arrested for. So how can Candace think that that's not relevant to his charges? Here's how he explained the context of the video. And it's explaining my general overall, explains my life and how things are affected owning a pornography company, because obviously a lot of women will be put off by that. It doesn't explain, it doesn't say, I'd be very careful how I answer this question because I'm currently under an investigation, right? Mm -hmm. So I'd be very careful how I answer it. People are trying to chop it up and say that it says I am using uh, the lover boy method to somehow convince women to do things they didn't want to do. But this is simply me explaining. It's actually a dating course I made a long time ago. And So yeah, and you look very young in the video. I'm super young and I'm talking about, hey, when you sleep with this girl or you meet that girl or you meet this girl on Instagram and I have a webcam company, I don't tell them I have a webcam company. And I just think all oh, that's kind of crass and it's below me yeah. and I don't really like talking about it. And it's amazing how things change as you mature and you get older. But yeah, I was talking about how I talk. I don't mention I have a webcam business. The basic premise of the video was me explaining that I don't mention I have a webcam business ever and that I'm Mr. Rich and I have this nice car and I go on dates with girls. And sometimes when I say I have a webcam business, some of them want money and they want to work for me. That's the basic premise of it. Right. But what Candace didn't show was the actual context of the video, which if you watch it, you'll instantly realize that this isn't just a dating course. I mean, does this sound like a dating course to you? You, your bottom bitch, the new girl, you go out for a nice dinner. The bottom bitch is the one who does the selling. You don't do the selling. The girl has to hear from a girl. And this is where your bottom bitch to be trained. That's why I said it's so important to have a good first girl. First girl was so good, it was easy. My girl was sitting there going, oh my God, before this I was a waitress and it was shit, and now I do this, I make so much money, and the guys all love me and they adore me, and on my birthday they send me presents, and I get so much money, blah, 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 and it's so much fun, and we stay at home, and da, 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 and we're gonna go to Thailand soon, and we're gonna be working in Thailand, and we're gonna stay there for as long as we want, you should come with us, it's gonna be so much fun, da, 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 da. Martinis, 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 bang, threesome. Slam them both, your bottom bitch knows, this girl's like, okay, well, I'll try it. Put both girls on camera together the first day so the new girl could sit there and just sit with the other girl and get drunk. Give them a bottle of vodka, put on the fucking chatterbait, a uh, hundred tokens per shot. The guys will send loads of money to get the girls drunk because guys like drunk girls. Girls will sit there, get drunk, have a great time. You say it's your new job now. You haven't go to work ever again. That's how you recruit girls. 
Do not recruit girls any other way. Now, to be clear, the point in exposing the context of the clip is not to say that he's necessarily guilty of his current legal case, but instead that he's consistently lying and Candace fell for all of it. Knowing what you know now, it makes it a lot easier to see past the smoke when Tate says things like this. And this idea that you're going to find somebody and 10 or 11 years ago, they did something which might even be slightly distasteful, not even illegal. And you're going to crucify him forever. I just don't believe that's genuine virtue. I think it's just an attack. Once again, I was a much younger man. I think if you were to take any 24 year old and look at the stuff he puts on the internet, some of it's going to be stupid. And I think if you look at anybody who made things 10 years ago, some of it's going to be stupid. It's absolutely not really not criminal in any regard. There's right. nothing criminal about it. It has no bearing or any interest in the current case. For the last 17 months, analyzing every aspect of my entire life across the last 10 to 15 years. And what did they find? An old YouTube clip? That's the worst they could find. No sexual perversion, no drugs, no genuine criminal acts. They found something semi-immoral in a YouTube clip. Now, right before I started filming this video, Tucker Carlson's interview with Tristan Tate was just released and it was just more of the same. Not even five minutes into the interview, we see Tristan spreading loads of misinformation about the case and even going so far as to say that the other girls that were charged along with the Tates were only charged for inviting another girl to a birthday party. But there are two women involved, yes. My personal assistant and her friend got thrown in prison with me. Essentially, their crime was inviting one of the alleged victims to a birthday party that I wasn't even at that happened in this house. Now, once again, if you've actually read the indictment and you look at the screenshot evidence, you'll see that the girls threaten violence and are accused of being engaged in all kinds of other illegal activities like unauthorized access to computers and accounts, for example. While she was gone, Georgiana illegally accessed her laptop, illegally accessed her private Facebook account and private WhatsApp account, and she distributed uh, pornographic images of this victim to her friends and family through these platforms. And it's alleged that she did so in front of other girls with the threat of this can also happen to you. And they were sent to prison with me. One, one for having the crime of being my personal assistant and one for the crime of knowing me and showing up at parties where these alleged victims who say they weren't victims were at. And they're charged in this organized criminal But game. to be clear, none of the charges pertain to sex. No. Rape. No. Selling anyone, no. slavery, moving people across international borders to pimp them out. No. So when Tristan says that they were arrested for simply inviting a girl to a birthday party and that their charges have nothing to do with sex, he's not telling Tucker the truth. But at least Tucker seemed genuinely confused about the charges and at least tried to make sense of them for a brief moment. It's not the fact that the, as I said, the evidence is junk because they now have to put a case together. But I'm confused as to how what you're being accused of constitutes human trafficking. Well, it's a very loose, um, it's a very loose law. It's a very, uh, the, I mean, but the term doesn't seem to have a real definition. No, no, it doesn't. It's now, of course, Tristan isn't being straightforward here, but it's more disturbing to me that Tucker has no idea how to press forward since he seemed to not have even read the indictment. So that's not connected at all. Not, to at, the church. not at all. The webcam studio was shut four and a half, five years before I allegedly started this kidnapping gang. So they're not connected. So you do not way. run a web business now. Web no, absolutely business. not. The cam business is, uh, it's still going. Now with that out the way, this should bother you. It should bother you that both Candace Owens and Tucker Carlson have literally helped the Tates lie to hundreds of millions of people and have helped more young men have justification for seeing Tate as a role model. Younger boys yep. love you. Yes. They absolutely, like the 12, 13 year old, 14 year old, I, I, I have not come across a 12, 13 year old boy who's not just an Andrew Tate stand. Yeah. And I think that's, it's remarkable. It gives you a lot of power. I do believe that I now have a huge platform and with young boys, they're ex exceptionally interested in my case. I do believe to a degree I'm an anti-hero. I do believe to a degree that the harder I'm attacked, the more credibility is given to me in the eyes of my fans. I think that they see, ah, everyone's out to get this guy. Everyone was out to get Batman. 
This is kind of feels that way. I mean, we're not talking about petty theft here. We're talking about serious allegations that are worthy of taking seriously. Tate is on trial for grape and human trafficking, and Candace and Tucker have actually helped to give them a defense without seemingly knowing the case at all. Now, because of this, of course, some people have come to the conclusion that Candace and Tucker both know the truth, but were intentionally lying to try to help the Tates. That's possible, but personally, I think that it's a lot more likely that they were deceived by Tate since they agree with him on some political issues, and they were deceived by his charm and career. Charisma. Tate is really good at being convincing. So if someone's only listening primarily to Tate and what he says about the case and they haven't looked at the physical evidence or even read the indictment, then of course they're probably going to believe what Tate has to say about the case. And all of this leads us to the larger point that I made at the beginning of the video. Tucker Carlson identifies as a Christian and Candace Owens also identifies as a Christian, but agrees with Tate when he says things like this. I'm not the kind of person who's going to sit and apologize for his past. I believe all's well that ends well. I believe we're humans and we grow and we learn. I'd be a fool and I'd be disingenuous to sit here and pretend I was sorry for something I did in the past. And I'm not going to do that. I'm going to be very honest to everyone at home. I think I could have done much worse things. I know many people from my circumstances who did many things worse than what I did. And all in all, I'm not going to sit and pretend I'm sorry for something I'm not sorry for. I'm not sorry that I lived this. I don't think I would say that I'm sorry for anything that I, decisions that I made when I was young either, because that, this is the deck of hands that I was given. What do you want me to do? Yeah. We've also heard something similar come from Trump when it comes to his past. But have you ever asked God for forgiveness? <laughs> I'm not sure I have. I just go and try and do a better job from there. I don't think so. I think I, if I, if I do something wrong, I think I just try and make it right. I don't bring God into that picture. I don't. But as Christians, we should be sorry and repentant for the things that we've done in the past. The Bible warns us not to show partiality. As Christians, we have to be intentional about not showing favoritism for our personal advancement. I'm not saying that I know for certain that this is what Candace and Tucker were trying to do, but they were either showing partiality or they were both deceived since they didn't approach his claims with a reasonable degree of skepticism and didn't do any research. When we elevate political parties and men over God in our hearts, we're prone to being deceived by them, even when they're teaching and sharing anti-Christian values. In doing this, we naturally find ourselves wanting to excuse abhorrent and anti-Christian behavior from people that we might align with on political issues, but not extending that same degree of charity to those on the other side of the political aisle. This not only leads us to the uncomfortable question of if our loyalty is primarily to Christ or our politics, but it also makes us frighteningly easy to be deceived since our guards get lowered. So perhaps the main takeaway of this video should be to put your trust in Christ and not men. And by the way, if you haven't seen my last video on Tate and the undeniable evidence that he's been lying and deceiving everyone, go ahead and click this video and I'll see you over there. But the next time that you hear someone saying, I'm not sorry that I lived this. I don't think I would say that I'm sorry. What are you going to say? What do you mean?